In today's video, we're going to walk through the updated and enhanced ViewSpa template and how you can use it to build your next highly productive web application. ServiceStack's new ViewSpa template has been updated to be based off Microsoft's own View template, but also further enhanced to provide the best developer experience when building ASP.NET Vue.js applications. We will walk through the developer workflow of building custom admin screens, as well as creating and managing content pages such as blog posts and landing pages to show how this template provides the basis for a great looking and highly productive system to build and maintain. To get started with the ViewSpar template, we can use servicetax.net x tool along with the command x new space view hyphen spa space my app. This will create a new solution in the My App directory with the usual four projects you find in Service Stack templates of App Host, Service Interface, Service Model, and Tests project, along with a dedicated client project for your Vue.js application. Despite this split between your client and server projects, we only need to run our server project during development and we automatically get Vite running our Vue.js client project with hot reloads, along with Tailwind for automatically detecting and including just the styles our application requires. For example, here in Rider, we can use the HTTPS profile and we will see our backend API startup and show us the metadata view of our services that the application has available. Shortly after this, an NPM process will automatically run our Vite front end, which is already set up to connect to the running service stack services. We can see the Vite hot reload feature working by quickly editing the index.view file in the myapp.client project under the source pages directory. As soon as we make an edit and save our changes, they are reflected quickly thanks to Hot Reload. This makes editing content heavy applications quick and easy, but it also makes development fast since this works for your dynamic view components. You'll notice here we're using a single file view component as well, and Vite is handling all the compilation at development time, giving us an easy way to manage our view components. If we navigate to the to do MVC view file, we can edit the way the to-do text is being templated in this component, which automatically applies to all the to-do items when we save our changes. We get the same instant feedback when making style changes using Tailwind CSS. For example, if we change the title text on the main index page using the text green 600 to text red 600, the new style is detected and included in the regenerated Tailwind styles, which Vite then detects and hot reloads our application with our style changes applied. Something you will also notice in the Solution Explorer is these single file view components living side by side with markdown files. This is because the template is set up to automatically handle rich markdown files, which can be further enhanced using your own custom view components. This makes it easy to embed interactive components right within your blog posts and other markdown driven pages. Here we have a blog post that we have several different interactive components embedded in the content. This is done by declaring your imports within a script setup tag at the top of the markdown file and then using those components normally as you would on any other page. Let's include a new one as an example. Let's say we wanted to make it easy for our readers to skim a blog post for a specific shell command related to the post. We have a shell command.view component that is already used for various pages in the template. But even from within a blog post, we can include and use this component anywhere for maximum reuse. First, we add the script setup element at the top of our markdown content and then import the component we want to use. Here we're using the at forward slash prefix as a shortcut which is defined in our tsconfig.app.json file which points to our locally defined components. We specify the shell command name which matches the view single file component file name in the source components directory. We can then use this component in our blog post using either the lowercase kebab syntax or matching the case of the name of the view file. 
This shell command component then presents the inner content as text presented as a shell command, which stands out in our blog post, making it easy for readers to find and copy as they need. This ability to include and reuse components within content heavy pages like markdown files means you can make blog posts and landing pages more engaging for your users. These components can interact with your own service stack APIs as well, meaning you can build entire workflows all controlled and reused within your own markdown content as needed. When building your own components, you can also leverage the Service Stack View Components library, which can integrate automatically with your Service Stack services by generating full create, read, update, and delete grids for managing data, and auto forms for easy interaction with any of your services. If we open the Source Pages folder in the Client project, we will see examples of this in the Bookings Auto.View page, where the Auto Query Grid component is being used and customized to manage data in the API's booking table. This component leverages Service Stack Auto Query services, which makes enabling create, read, update, and delete operations on your SQL database tables easy to set up and use. Within the app host project, we can see the configure.autoquery.cs file, which registers the auto query feature plugin to support this functionality. Once enabled, these auto query services only need a class that represents the database table and request DTOs for each of the API operations you want to support. Navigating to the service model project, we can see the booking class that the auto query view component is referencing in our client project to integrate with the same auto query service. Here we have the booking class represent our database table and the auto query service request DTOs for each type of operation. Each operation has a base class or interface that maps the request DTO to the model. For example, here we have the read operation request DTO called query bookings inheriting from query DB of type booking, the create booking request DTO implementing the iCreateDB interface of type booking, as well as the iPatchDB and iDeleteDB interfaces following the same pattern for update and delete operations. At this point, you have working auto query services, but if you need custom behavior at any point for these auto query services, you can just provide your own service implementation for the specific request DTO like you would for creating any other service stack service, and your integrations with the auto query grid view components stay the same. This approach lets you iterate quickly while still maintaining a high level of flexibility and customization options when needed. And you get the same level of integration and customization flexibility when using the auto forms feature for the service stack view library. Also in the bookings auto page, we can see the use of the auto edit form component for updating the related booking coupon. The type attribute specified on the component maps to the related auto query service to update the coupon table. Notice that no other TypeScript was needed to interact with the API, just client side behavior customizations like any other view component. If you do need direct control over the API integration yourself with your own view component, components, we also get another feature that ensures a great developer experience, and that is your view component integrations are typed end to end. This is available through the generation of TypeScript definitions directly from your running Service Stack APIs using either built-in IDE plugins for most popular IDEs or command line tooling via the Service Stack.net X tool. To better demonstrate this developer workflow, let's extend the to-do MVC page to include a due date feature. This will include additional data stored in our backend, a new query for our API, and an update to our Vue.js application. Starting with the backend, we can open the service interface project and the todoservice.cs file. We have our to-do services using another auto query compatible implementation called auto query data. 
This enables the same auto query services with the use of in-memory data sources. And since this data source is in memory, we only have to extend the to-do class with the due date property and populate it in some of the example to-do items for ease of demonstration. Next, we will update the related request details like the create, query, and update to-do classes. The query to-dos request will automatically support queries to check for items past their due date via a built-in auto query convention like due date less than, which takes any property name and the less than suffix and supports data types like dates and numbers. However, if you have a common query you want to optimize for ease of use, you can customize query property behavior using attributes like query data field or query field for SQL use cases. A simple example might be if you want to see all items due by a specific date. You could create a property on the queries to do request DTO called due by that takes a date and returns all to do items due on or before a specific date. The query data field attribute could then be used to specify an operation on the field due date with the condition of less than or equal to and the term ensure. This makes our new feature easy to use on our client, especially when combined with those generated TypeScript definitions. And we can update our application's TypeScript definitions by using one of the Service Stack plugins or using the X tool. We can use the X tool by navigating to the source directory where we have the dtos.ts file, and we can use the command x space TypeScript. This will detect your dtos.ts file and pull in the updated TypeScript definitions from your running local Service Stack APIs. And now we could go back to our todomvc.view component page and update our UI with our typed end-to-end -end integration. Another great feature already built into the ViewSpar template is the ASP.NET Core identity authentication support, along with a registration workflow with email confirmation and even user management for admin users via the built-in service stack UIs. To tie all these features together, let's now look at building a new admin screen for managing data in a new table in our SQLite database. The template comes with built-in example bookings table, so let's say we were required to build a new feature to support testimonials related to specific bookings that admins need to manage. Just like the to-do example, we need to first support the storage of the new data, but this time we will use the SQLite integration with ORM Lite migrations. Opening the Appos project and the migrations folder, we will create a new class called migration1001. This will inherit from a migration base class and override the up and down method. We can then define the structure of our new table in an inner class in the migration1001 class and utilize the db.create table and db.drop table in our up and down methods respectively. ORM Lite will use the class name and property names and types to generate the required SQL for the changes of the create and drop table. Our new booking testimonial class has an ID primary key, a testimonial string for the content, a name for the testimonial, and a booking ID as a foreign key to the related booking. We will then duplicate this class to our service model class for use by our application. The service stack migrations encourage repeatability by isolating changes to specific migrations by using separate model classes from your running application. This will ensure migrations of pending schema changes between releases is possible from any point in your application development, as well as normal debugging processes to validate your migration process and to make sure your schema changes are performing as expected. You can run these migrations using the npm tasks provided in the template with the command npm run migrate. Now that we have our new table, let's create the auto query request DTOs of create, query, update, and delete booking testimonial. The update request will usually have the same properties as the model itself, 
For the create, it will likely have all but the primary key, and the delete only needs the ID property. Again, you can include or exclude additional properties for better control of your custom behavior, or even override the whole service implementation for a specific request as needed. For the query DTO, we will just add the IDs property, which is an array of integers. This will allow us to select multiple specific testimonials by ID in a single request. With our auto query services set up, we can now run our application and use the built-in servers UIs to test them out. By default, the API Explorer feature is enabled, which means we can navigate to forward slash UI on the back end, and in this case, it's running on localhost 5001 and see the new booking testimonial services on the left-hand side. Since these are auto query services, we also get to use the built in low code UI, which is available on the top right. And this gets us an editable data grid, which itself is powered by the same service stack view library we're using in this template. Also, by default in this template, we get generated open API v3 specifications via the popular swashbuckle library for ASP.NET Core, and our new services are visible here straight away ready to test out in the Swagger UI. Next, we want to include the booking testimonials into the existing admin dashboard. By logging in as the example admin user, we are greeted with the admin dashboard, which instantly shows us the links to other admin screens and some related statistics. This is controlled by a custom service called admin data that comes with the template. If we navigate to the myservices.cs file in the service interface project, we will see the admin admin data service where we can include tables we want to manage via our custom admin screens. Just by adding the label and the type to the tables array returned from the service, the built-in admin landing page generates the related stats and menus. Lastly, for creating the actual page itself, we will name the view file the same as the label but lowercase. And thanks to the service tax auto query grid view component, you can start with a very simple implementation for this page just by using a single auto query grid component specifying the type of booking testimonial. And with the hot reload capabilities of Veet, our page is updated automatically and we can see the new auto query grid complete with the ability to filter and manage your data. And auto query models and services are aware of each other when used this way and we can see this in action with the booking testimonial auto query grid. Since the booking testimonial uses the reference attribute pointing towards the booking model, the create and edit forms automatically get a booking lookup dialog built in to easily populate the foreign key reference in the booking testimonial. By bringing together the updated ViewSpar template from Microsoft and enhancing it with the capabilities of Service Stack and the integrative features of the Service Stack View Components library, you get an extremely productive starting point for your next application. With features like ASP.NET Core Identity Auth, User Management, Open API Specification Generation, built-in GitHub Action Power, Docker Deployments, and much more, you can pick and choose the features you need to rapidly deliver your next system. Well, that's it for this video. If you have any questions or feedbacks on our templates or videos, please let us know in the comments. We also have a React Spa template with similar features if you prefer React, for which I'll leave a link in the description. You can also reach out to us via our community Discord, GitHub discussions, or paid license holders get access to priority support in our customer forums. Regardless, Service Stack is free for individuals or open source projects, so anyone can join our Discord and GitHub discussions. And as always, thanks for watching.